Panama City, the connection point between two giant continents. Not only does it connect the land, but the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans as well, serving as a hub for migration by land and by sea through the Panama Canal. On this trip, we're headed to Pinas Bay. It goes near the southern border of the country in an area known as the Darien Gap. The jungle is dense and the mountains are steep. In fact, it's so treacherous that there is actually no roads that could connect the two continents for a span of nearly 70 miles. Their area has become a no man's land, traveled by migrants, smugglers, and rebel groups, but home to indigenous tribes that remain nearly untouched by the hustle and bustle of the rest of the world. And just like that, we are stuck in the jungle. Well, kind of. So why here? There's been over 300 IGFA records broken at this very location. Shortly after World War II, a military survey identified a reef area that was constantly filled with life. That area is known as Zangre Reef, and it's only a short five minute ride from Pimas Bay, one of Panama's only natural harbors. The land surrounding Pinus Bay must be developed for pineapple farming, but the soil was much too acidic and it made the pineapples white inside and taste funny. The idea was abandoned and the land was sold for cheap to Ray Smith, an oil tycoon, in 1961. Mr. and Mrs. Smith decided to build a fishing lodge after he broke one of the first IGFA marlin records on 12 pounds S. The lodge has changed ownership only a handful of times since then, but pictures of Mr. and Mrs. Smith and the local tribes can be found in the Marlin Bar. And the bar itself is modeled after one of the original 31 Bertrams named Babe. Aside from its history, what makes this place so special is all the hard work and preparation that keeps this place running. The fishing tackle is well taken care of. They re-spool all the reels every week and recycle over a million feet of fishing line per year. With a fleet of 30 plus birch rooms, all the repairs have to be made here. A huge stock of boat parts for three different power drains. They have their own haul out on a rail system, a fiberglass shop. All the lodge furniture is made right here with their very own sawmill.
This year's trip was in February, trying to catch the end of Blue Marlin season, but the ocean had other plans. The humble current had already pushed green cooler water into the area, so the whale sharks were dense inshore and hard to spot. One collision with a whale shark would certainly ruin your day and the boat. The water temperatures ran from 72 to 83 in just a short run. The fish were around, but getting to bite would prove to be very difficult. Every day starts with making bait. Bonita are used for pitch and live baiting, and Spanish mackerel for strip baits. Sometimes you catch them quick, sometimes you don't. Fred.
take pictures, don't worry. Here in Panama, they use a variety of techniques to entice a bite. When covering a lot of ground, we use a three liver spread. At the same time, we have a strip bait ready to go and also a live pitch bait as well. If a fish comes up in the spread and won't bite a lure, sometimes having the live bait or the strip bait right in their face will get them to go.
How you feeling there, big boy? All I can say is, what a great trip. Thanks again to Richie and the staff at Tropic Star. We look forward to another trip down in Panama.